Hello all. Today I would like to show you how to use the clash detection tests that they are part of the design validation. So we are start with our project code design validation and come to the test. So as you can see we've got a new button on the left upper corner. So we click that. And there is a clash detection tests. Click on it and we start to define the name of the clash detection test. So I will just name my test roof versus beams. And the description it will be needed for the construction. Clicking next, now we need to define our I model. So we are picking up the I model out from the list. Right here, I've got just only one I model. Of course, when you have more I models, they will be listed just out. Finally, we need to pick up the version that we, this, that we are interested in. Once we've done it, we can click next and go to the final stage of the clash detection test definition. The last step is to find what will be tested against what. In that case, we can find two different types of possibilities, models and categories. According to that, it is possible to have three different variations of tests, so model versus model, model versus categories and the categories versus categories. In this example we are choosing anything that will contain a roof and the beam in the name. So simply we are using the, for that filters that are on the top of the columns. Just type in the roof, filter them out and now we can select all the models and all the categories that contain roof in the name. Next, we can set it to given set. In our case, it will be the set A. For the next, we are choosing beams. So we need to clear the filters and type beam in the filter field. So once we've got it, we can pick up it by selected by once or click on the top just to select all and set it to given set. In this case, will be the set B. After that, we can check what we've got in a set A and a set B. Additionally, we have the different features that we can use. So one is the clearance, so clearance, which is about any element within a given distance or range that will be reported as a clash. This is quite simple. Self check, checking the clashes within one set. And next, there are suppression rules that allow to suppress some clashes that are acceptable during the project. And suppression touching that allows touching of the elements within specific overlapping range. Once you enable that, you have to be aware that the clearance will be neglected. And values and units that can be defined in this manner. Suppression rules will be the topic on the next video. So once we are done with the, all of the sets and the criteria that we need, we can create the test just clicking create. Once everything is loaded and created, you can find your test in a top test in a design validation. What you can also find right here is a table with the name, test type, description, last modified and modified by additionally you can have you can modify tests you can delete that and you can export them to csv file finally what you can do you can just run the test once you click that the new window will pop up and you need to choose 
your eye model and the version that you would like to perform your clash detection test. In my case, it would be the last one. Run the test. After you hit the button, you'll receive two communicates that your test is started to run. Now let's go to the results tab. It will take a few minutes to receive an email with a notification that your clash detection test is ready to view the results. When you hit the link with the number of the failures, the results of the clash detection test that has been created can be seen. But for that and for viewing the results, I would like to invite you to see another video about the clash detection.